Ben. Nikki just joined. What's going on, Nikki? Chet just hopped on. Cool. All right. Well, what I will do is share my screen. Um, as I said, basically what we wanted to talk about today was um, the home buying process and how our team can help you um, by leveraging technology to purchase your home. Um, again, we can go 100% um, tech heavy and do everything virtually, or we can you know, not and go somewhere in between. So what we'll do is dig in to the different steps of the home buying process. Um, and Sandra will kick us off by talking about consultations. Awesome. Um, so just hopping right into it. The first thing that we like to do um, as soon as I make a call and the prospect is ready or wants to talk about the home buying process, I'm like, OK, let's hop on a Zoom call. It'll take literally 30 minutes. And what I like to do on Zoom is flip through our home buyer guide. Of course, I'd like to sit and have coffee and go over it face to face. But with everything going on, um, this is the most uh, effective way to get the message across. And they can ask me questions. We're on the same page literally um so you can book your consultation um through my Calend calendly link right there which, which allows you to just pick a day and time that works for you and we'll just hop on in and walk through the steps cool good deal the thing that i like too about the virtual consultation is it's like you can meet face to face and kind of get to know each other a little bit um yeah. and then yeah it's like 30 minutes or less get all your questions answered um, and I think as far as timeline goes, Sandra, um, you know, I know you've been having a lot of consultations lately. Would you say most people are looking to move immediately this year? Like what's what's the timeline? So the timeline really ranges. Um, I have some people waiting, you know, within the next two to three months. And then I have others who are um, looking later this year and maybe next year. So I think the time is it's a great time. It's always a good time to learn about the process. It's never too early. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm getting a mixed uh, mixed audience of prospective buyers. They could be ready now, later, doesn't matter. Cool, good deal. So next up, what we wanted to talk about was the home search um, and portal. So basically, um, something to think about as you are thinking about purchasing a home, what are your preferences? So that's either gonna be location, um, bedrooms and bathrooms, square footage, how many stories you want. So, you know, two-story home, three-story home, four-story home, one story home with no stairs, um, if you need a garage or no garage, things like that. So um, what we'll basically do is set up a portal for you um, in our personalized portal where we'll have all of the homes that fit those fit your preferences and fit your, um, your taste. And those will be pushed out to you as soon as they hit the market. So as Sandra said, if you're looking to move, say, you know, next year or something like that, we can set that up to come out to you monthly or weekly or daily, depending on your um, preferences and depending on your um, priority, basically. Ryan, do you want to talk about virtual showings? I'd love to talk about virtual showings. Um, so we do have several different options that we use to help our clients actually tour the homes. And uh, of course, these can these are a little bit different than what you may traditionally think about when you're thinking about touring homes for uh, uh, for your home search. So first will be 3D tours. And uh, I think, Katie, you have a uh, an example to show here. Um, I can pull one up. Yes. We may not have an example to show here. That's fine. But basically, a uh, 3D tour is we take a special camera and special tripod into a home. Uh, you set up the camera in each room. It spins 360 degrees, and that allows you to get a better feel of what it's actually like to walk through the home. Um, so this is a great way to really vet the properties and make sure that you're looking at the homes that are actually going to match uh, the criteria for your search. There you go. So once you're in there, you can spin 360 degrees, uh, look all around and then move throughout the room as well to check out different areas. So really just like you are walking through the property, uh, just in a virtual way. And just as a note, basically on HAR.com in the top left-hand corner of the first um, picture, it's gonna say 3D, um, if there is a 3D tour available for those properties. Yep. 
So uh, 3D tours are a great first step. Um, like I mentioned, to vet properties and make sure that you're looking at the type of homes that you're really interested in. Um, the next step uh, could be a FaceTime, Skype, or Zoom tour of the property. And that's where your buyer's agent is actually going to visit the property in person, can walk through and have you on FaceTime. So you, you all are basically walking through the home together. And that's always really helpful because if you see something that catches your eye or you want to take a closer look, you can ask for your um, agent to, you know, adjust the blinds, something like that, if you're having trouble seeing something. So um, it's a really uh, interactive way to tour properties. And uh, another uh, option that we have, if your schedule is really busy and you don't know if you're going to be able to commit to a specific time, is your buyer's agent can actually visit the property, take some short videos to share with you, and uh, that will help you narrow down your list as well. So these are all really great options to get to what we would like to call a short list of properties that are of the greatest interest for you. And once you have that short list, at that point, you may feel that it is necessary to visit the property in person with your agent. And uh, that can certainly be accomplished as well. We're following social distancing guidelines, making sure everybody's wearing masks. As the agent, we generally prefer to be in charge of handling doorknobs, uh, light switches, everything like that. So it allows our clients to be as safe as possible. So we certainly have a lot of options for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, the thing that I like about using Zoom for the virtual tours too is that you can record it and then send it later, right? So that you have you have it forever or for as long as you want, I guess. Good deal. Sandra, if someone's ready to make an offer, what can you do? We can definitely write that offer. Um, and how we do so, so we use what's called DocuSign. Um, most agents are familiar with it and it allows us to send you docs or send docs to the buyer to have them execute it and then we can send it over to the agent. So they can still, as the buyer, they can still sign docs uh, without actually having to pick up a pen and sign docs. Um, and you can do it on your tablet, your phone or your computer. Good deal. Um, all right. So basically, once you go under contract on a property, there's two things that are due, and that's called an option fee and earnest money. So those are normally two checks um, that you would write and take somewhere. Um, but there are other ways to do that where you don't have to write a check um, and you can do it electronically. So as far as option fees go, a lot of sellers will use Zelle, um, which is generally pretty common through like Chase Bank and Wells Fargo and some of the bigger banks. Um, PayPal, there's a company called Go Option Pay. You can wire it to the seller, or you could obviously write a check and mail it. Uh, and then earnest money basically goes to the title company. Um, and again, you can wire that, you can mail it, um, or um, the title company can arrange for a courier to come pick up that money. And then there's other electronic options that some title companies have where you can actually send it basically directly from your bank to theirs. Um, so there are a lot of different secure ways that you can pay these without even having to leave your couch. And I know I don't know where my checkbook is. So um, doing these electronically would definitely be beneficial for me. So when it uh, when you find the right home and you're under contract, inspections are one of the first steps to make sure that you're buying a property that is in sound condition and that you truly understand uh, the home that you're going to own. So um, inspections generally in a normal environment, we would recommend that our clients attend at least the last portion of the inspection to have a discussion with the inspector because while there may not be uh, major deficiencies with the home, the great thing about home inspectors is that they can also provide a lot of helpful insight into what it will uh, require for you to maintain the property once you own it. So we still feel like that is a, uh, a an essential conversation for buyers to have. And um, what we're doing instead is we're asking that when an inspection company is selected, communicate on the front end that you're really interested in having a discussion with the inspector that inspects the property. And hopefully they can also perform, you know, a FaceTime, Skype, Zoom call with you because that can make it a little bit easier to understand exactly what they're talking about. Um, inspectors can be a little technical. 
So um, they may use terms that we're not familiar with as laymen, um, but definitely having a conversation with your inspector will help you um, to understand the most important items that were revealed by the inspection and how to address those properly. Um, when you're speaking with your inspector, whether it's over the phone or via FaceTime, um, definitely ask questions. I think my favorite question to ask an inspector is, if this were your home, how would you feel about that item? And, you know, I think that provides excellent context because, um, you know, the inspector may say, while an item is technically deficient, it's not something that requires immediate repair and you can certainly occupy the home with that condition. Um, once you've received your inspection report from the inspector, please take the time to read through it, make note of any items that you have questions about or major concerns. So then you can review it with your agent and another conversation with the inspector if needed to really guide your uh, negotiations from that point. Yeah, all really good points. Um, as you guys are watching this, if you have any questions in regards to the home buying process or ways in which we can do things, you know, virtually or anything like that, please drop them in the comments so that we can address them. Um, and next up, Sandra's going to talk a little bit about the title company. All right. So title company documents, um, they will most likely be emailed to the buyer and the agent. And before signing anything, we can go over them uh, using Zoom. And then, of course, to sign it, execute it, and send it back to them, we'll use DocuSign for your signatures and then send it before closing. So and that's how we get it done. Yeah, pretty much everything up until closing can be done via DocuSign, so the title company should be able to, to coordinate that. Um, but, Ryan, when it gets time to actually close on the house, let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, so I think in general, this situation uh, and the restrictions on travel have really required a lot of different organizations to be creative in how they handle their business. And title companies are no different. So most of the title partners that we're working with offer several different options to make it as convenient as possible for you to close and still feel safe at the same time. So first, uh, curbside closing. Uh, think of it like rolling up to your favorite restaurant and they bring the food right out to you. It's essentially the same thing, except when you drive off, you have a home. Um, <laughs> so basically, they would bring out all of the documents that you need. You can stay in the comfort of your own car. Of course, everybody's wearing uh, the required protective equipment. And um, it can just be a very easy way to uh, accomplish the closing. The next option would be a mobile notary. Now, this is a, an individual who has their notary license and they're going to visit you uh, probably at your home at this particular time. And of course, same scenario, they'll be wearing PPE and um, of course you should as well. And uh, it does allow you to stay in your own home rather than having to venture out. So say you have young kids at home, something like that, a very easy way for you to accomplish the closing. Now, if for whatever reason, neither of those options work for you, or if maybe you just prefer a, uh, a more online version of a closing, we actually have e-notaries as well. And it's just what it sounds like. An e-notary is going to be somebody that you connect with via you know, FaceTime on your phone or a, uh, a camera on your laptop. And they're essentially going to watch you sign the documents and notarize them as, as far as having watched you sign them. So as you can see, we do have a lot of different options there. Now, one additional item that I would like to point out is our title partners are still offering normal, as we might call them, closings in their office. But significant steps are being taken to make sure that everybody is uh, everybody stays safe. Uh, so basically they're spacing out closings so they have time to sanitize rooms in between each closing. Uh, the pins even that people use to sign with at closing, those go with them when they leave. So definitely another very uh, secure way to uh, close on your new home. I've seen some. Um, one of our title reps at Texas American Title had 
Um, basically the, the buyer had put a big table outside and like they put the papers down on the one side and pushed them over and they signed them all and pushed them back. But it was like outside of the actual house they were buying. So I thought that was funny. Um, cool. So after you sign everything, um, Sandra, what happens next? You get the keys. <laughs> um, time. You finally get the keys. And um, since we can't do this, like, handing it over in person at the title company, taking a picture and stuff. Um, I think the best thing that I can do is meet you at the home and, um, you know, give it to you there. I can put it at the front door or we can mail it to you. But anyways, as your agent, we will coordinate all of that. I will make sure that you get the keys. Um, and yeah. Cool. And these pictures are, were all pre um, social distancing. So just yes. as a uh, caveat there. <laughs> Um, felt the need to point that out. So if you have any questions in regards to the home buying process, um, you can book a 30 minute um, conversation with Sandra using the link there. Um, I think it would be this way, <laughs> this way. Point to your left. I was pointing at Sandra. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, my bad. Okay. So yeah, you can, you can book it with her down there. Um, <laughs> But if you have any questions, Amy asked if notar the e-notaries are expensive. So it depends on the title company. Um, and that's also something to, to verify with them. Some title companies are waiving fees. Some are cutting them in half. Some aren't cutting them at all. Um, so that would definitely be something to, to ask your title company and the lender on the transaction if that's something that can be done. And if it's approved on both fronts, then you guys can talk cost. Um, but it really just depends on if it's, if it's allowed, one. And then two, um, if the depends on their cost. Mm -hmm. um, cool, I'm just trying to scroll scroll through the comments here. Did you guys have anything else that you wanted to add? Or yeah. talk about? One note on the cost of you know, e-notary or mobile notary, um, even prior to COVID, um, there were certain situations where our clients needed those options. And I, I found them to be very reasonable in terms of price. So I would certainly suggest that if that is a major concern for you, that definitely get a quote, see how much it actually costs if there is a cost associated with it, because it probably isn't going to be that much. Yeah. I mean, I know that for, for clients prior to um, COVID, like it would normally be $200 or less, mm -hmm. right? Um, for, for at least a mobile notary, but yeah, cool. Well, um, I appreciate everyone out there that watched. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. We will go back after and respond. Um, and if you would like to book a consultation, you can do so using that link right over there. Uh, other side, other side. Um, <laughs> but thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you later. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Later.